Hi, everyone. This is the iPhoneography Podcast. Okay, everyone. This is a, a special recording date, and um, it's because we have a guest on today who is from totally the other side of the planet. And um, I've been uh, wanting to get this chap on for quite some time now, and uh, here we go. Um, first of all, I have my my uh, uh, co-host, Dave Podner, with me too. Uh, he was fortunate enough to be able to join us. Hey, Dave. Great. How's it going today? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, let's, uh, hey, let's just get right into it. Uh, our guest today is none other than uh, Smartphone Photography Trainings, Mike James. How you doing, Mike? Great. Thank you very much. I'm excellent. Very good today. Yeah, so uh, we've been talking about having you on for a little while now, and uh, uh, everything's lined up now that we've uh, been able to schedule it. So it's it's actually early morning for you, and uh, late afternoon for Dave and I. So uh, that's part of why it's so tricky to to get somebody on from you know a completely different mm -hmm. side of the planet. Um, but you know, thanks to technology, we've got this ability, and and uh, you know, glad to have it. So. Uh, Let's just start by, you know, introducing yourself, uh, tell everybody who you are and, and what it is you do. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's actually, it's uh, seven o'clock here, so it's quite pleasant timing. So we've done that really well. <laughs> Sometimes I'm running workshops at two o'clock in the morning and, and they are hard <laughs> to, to bring the energy and, and present and talk about smartphone photography at that time in the morning. It's a challenge, as passionate as we are about it, <laughs> it's going to be quite hard. Uh, so I help, I've, I've just rewritten this little blurb, you know, we, we all have to have a little blurb who we help and what we do. So I've, I've just wrote, rewrote this a few days ago. So I help photo enthusiasts intuitively create their next favorite photo using a systematic process. Now, I know that's a bit of an oxymoron and that's intentionally that way <laughs> because so I, I'm online now. I used to do in-person workshops, but everything is online now and I find online training is very different to uh, in-person workshops. People want the fastest transition in the uh, least amount of time. And for you, for, for us, we, uh, we're passionate about this. It's a lifelong journey for us. And if we pick up a tip here and there, then that's fantastic. We, it keeps us motivated and inspired. But for a lot of people, it's like any new skill they want to they want to kind of master it in the shortest amount of time so so that's why i have that systematic process but that said uh i'm acutely aware of not leading people down this path because i've been there where you become a slave to different guidelines and rules and 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 things like that because then you, you kind of yes they're the pathway to creativity and that's that's kind of been my my journey uh but yeah, a lot of people then get kind of fixated on the rule of thirds and, and then that becomes the ceiling that they hit because uh, that's, that's the way they've learned. So that's, that's what I try and do is try and help people uh, enjoy photography with the smartphone they have, whether it's an Android or an iPhone and tablet, iPad, whatever it is, action cam. Um, it doesn't really matter. I, I try and help people with more the, the fundamental of photography, the, the storytelling, the uh, intention behind the photo and composition and, and, and then into the mobile editing. I love that geeking out and, and having fun with that, but I, but I try and keep away from the technology side of it. And uh, hence why I have my 10 S max <laughs> sitting here in front of me. <laughs> Cause for me, it's, and, and you guys, I know you guys talk about this all the time. It's, it's the technology is fantastic, but it's the story behind the photo. It's, it's that, it's that side of the art of photography is, is, um, is a lot of fun and that's what I try and concentrate on because that's what I've struggled with so I try and help people with the struggle that I've had yeah it's um you know in the you know communities online and stuff there's a lot of people that are, are just getting into this kind of thing and um you know sometimes they just don't understand how it works and whatnot and uh having a you know programs like yours you're 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 so good at teaching it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, as, 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 as much as I think I know about this stuff, I never know everything. And, um, you know, I, I can help people as, as much as I can, but I can never do it in a way that's, you know, like a formal um, educational system like you have there. Uh, I, I just 
my, I think maybe it's because I'm too much of a scatterbrain. I don't know, but uh, uh, you even like you're, you're so uh, organized. Um, yeah. e- even when you when, when like you interviewed me about a week ago on your podcast and you were so well prepared and, and everything else. And I just said, before we started recording here today, we just fly off the seat of our pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think that comes from our tiny shutter dates. Dave, like seeing the tiny shutter, little plug for the past there. Um, but you know, when we, when we, uh, when we were on tiny shutter, we, we kind of discussed what we were going to talk about, but only just a little bit. (laughs) And, (laughs) but it was fun. I mean, it was fun. It was, it was, you know, you got, you got us for who we were. And, uh, um, I mean, Dave could tell you just as much as I could. It's all about bringing value, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Dave Or, or Mike, what was that? I was just going to say, it's all about bringing value. It doesn't yeah. matter. And I've been, I've been a, a, a listener for the last six years of when I first got into this, listening to the Tiny Shutter uh, uh, podcast. And you guys brought value. And it doesn't necessarily have to be educational value. It's inspiration. It's stories. It's, uh, it's yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a systems person. I, I, I connect with that side of my brain. That's why I've struggled so much with photography myself. But when I say struggle with photography, I've been doing it for more than 25 years. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but for the first 20 years, it was very technical, very, very technical, like extracting as much detail as you can out of that photo for, for very strict parameters and, and purpose for that photography. So um, when I say uh, what I enjoyed about your show is that, yeah, I mean, I like to have format. I like to um, appeal to different learning styles uh, with my stuff. But but just be, and as you say, community, I mean, getting you get involved in a community and the community is not for, formal. It's not format. It's not uh, structured, but just being surrounded by other people that are inspired and passionate about smartphone photography, it, it elevates your interest. And as you show more interest and practice more and get out there and try new things, it's kind of uh, like that community of interest type thing. We all learn. So yeah, it doesn't, I mean, what I teach is, is structured, but we can all learn smartphone photography for so many different different uh, areas even just getting out with a friend who has a, a similar smartphone as you and just you know just bantering and, and having a bit of fun and, and so yep. you can learn from anything from anyone you really can yeah and and dave you're getting the iphone 13 pro max at some point here in the near future so i imagine you'll be able to bounce off of uh you know other people that have that device because you're going from yep. the 10 up right. to the, the new one and that's going to be a pretty big jump for you right yeah, yeah it'll be an exceptionally large jump and actually um ruth ruth went from the seven plus to the 13 the non-pro just the 13 and admittedly that in terms of the camera yes she doesn't have zoom yes the ultra wide on the non-pro isn't as good as the pro but the regular i hate this is a with me you can't to have two cameras and call it wide and ultra wide it's like going to a restaurant and having two drink sizes called large and extra large yeah that's right (laughs) okay you can have regular and large you can have regular and small but to say this is large and this is extra large you're like okay it's large and extra large compared to what you only have two sizes and that may be the technical way to put wide and extra wide. But when you talk to normal people, you know, just the average person who, who's using their iPhone just to, or their, you know, whatever mobile phone to take pictures, you're going to, if there's two sizes, you're going to say normal and, and wide. So yeah, the normal, yeah. the normal on both of those are pretty similar. So the jump up for her from that seven plus and as we kind of talked about the, the last show, it's, oh, hon, I'm going to go outside and take the garbage out. Can I borrow your phone for a couple seconds so I can try some night photography, yeah. which I did last night, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is what I did last night. Because like, well, okay, let's see here. Taking out the garbage, it's almost eight o'clock at night. It's dark up here now uh, because of, you know, the wonderful tilt of the earth and seasons and all that fun stuff. And it's like, well, you know what? Uh, let's see if I can get some to see if there's halfway decent night photos, even though, you know, being in the city, it's still light pollution. It's like, let me see what I can get here and see if there's any good shots while I'm going down the driveway. 
And she's like, okay, I'm not doing anything. Just come back with it. And <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a similar thing. My wife has the 11 pro and I can't, I cannot get my hands on it. <laughs> because she, she, she works off her phone. So she is connected <sighs> to it. And, okay. and if I, if I, I can't get it for any more than a couple of minutes at a time. And when I, when I give it back, it's like, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, my, oh, my I can relate now, to that. <laughs> oh yeah. Now my pro max is due in 10 days to two weeks, depending on shipping. So the week of the 18th is when now, it's due. Now, every per, time you see the, a, every time you see a UPS truck or something in the neighborhood, are you kind of oh, hopeful? <laughs> uh, no, because I'm checking the app daily since yeah. I purchased it oh, yeah. through Apple. I'm actually checking like, okay, maybe, maybe they got a little, which I know we have issues with supply chain and everything else, but you know, like I'm checking, okay, let me check here. Let me check that. Okay. Update and <laughs> no, still scheduled. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but Mike, I, I, I know, I kind of know what you're talking about going from an in-person to online training. Um, years ago, I did um, college, um, college algebra courses where I taught online. And the way the format for the, for the course was you would meet the first night in person and the last night and weeks two, three, and four were completely online. Right. So you had to get, it's kind of like with photography where it's a hundred percent visual trying to get math, you know, college algebra out without being able to, and this was back, uh, 2005, 2006, 2007. So my first couple of years, I was still on dial up. So there was no, and this was pre YouTube. So there wasn't even, I'll post something to YouTube and you can watch the video, or, and there definitely wasn't a live, you know, like, oh, follow me on Twitch or go watch me when I go YouTube live or Facebook live, and then we can interact. It's how do I get this out to these people who need to get, you know, the back and forth virtual learning yeah. versus in person. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is, and, and you know, like you said, it's different because it's hard to, you know, a lot of times you don't have that immediate feedback, which as someone who teaches something, you're performing in a way because you're feeding off the people who you're giving the information to. So it helps to say, oh, I can see this person and they don't seem to understand that last concept or even virtually live where someone can have the direct interaction where you're doing a video and you're like, I hope they understand this point yeah. I'm trying to make. I'll find out yeah. about it maybe later, but I can't make an adjustment on the fly. So I can see yeah. where that going from the in-person training to the virtual on-demand training is a major issue. Mm, it is. I um, yeah, and, and going from from the in-person, you you pick up on so many non-verbal things as well. You pick up on body language, facial expressions. Uh, and, and you understand people's personality types as well. Some people are introverts. Some people have different learning styles. And so when I first wanted to move over to online uh, a few, quite a few years ago, I, uh, I went and studied, did a diploma in training design and, and assessment and became an instructional designer. It was a complete waste of time. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to do it to as a unique selling proposition because there's already plenty. I mean, there's already amazing photographers out there uh, delivering training and they have the credibility, they have the profile. And so for me as a new person coming in, it's like, okay, well, I, I don't have that following. I, I love what I do and I love teaching. So I thought, okay, if I get a formal qualification behind me, then that will then set me apart from everybody else. And it does, I mean, when I say it's a waste of time, the way I deliver training is very different because that was all kind of uh, learning how to develop accredited training through a registered training organization. So it was really relevant and, and, I, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, for online stuff, it's a little bit different. And as you said, it's, it's so hard to get people to turn up. And then, and when I first started this, the course, com course completion rates were like, so low it was it was kind of demoralizing because it's like I'm, I'm here to help you and and when people don't finish it it's like you take you, 
you, at first you kind of take it personally. <laughs> it's like, they don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> but, but, but then you find out that it's kind of an industry standard is that all online training struggles. So, so I tried to uh, implement, um, well, I have implemented now a community side to it. So every course that I have, there's a, a social wall and it's, it's, it's cost me a lot more money to set this up, but I think the learning experience is so much better because you can interact with other people that are doing the course, you can comment and you, and one of the biggest things I try and do is that it's not, because I've, I've heard this feedback from other people doing other courses when they come across to me is that they bought a course, spent so long making the decision, finally um, pulled the trigger, went for it, enrolled in it. And then they were just left on their own and just, that was it. They kind of it then sat in their inbox and, and, uh, and then they, and then life gets in the way and they get busy and it just sits there. And then, and then, and then you have buyer's remorse and all that sort of thing. So I, I really, really wanted to try and avoid that. So I have the community there. I have, whenever somebody signs up for, for a course, I jump straight onto um, Bonjuro and send them a personal thank you and a video message just to connect, make that connection and say, Hey, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here to hold your hand. I'm here to help you. It's yes, it's at their video lessons, but we have this social side of it as well. And you can reach out to me at any time. And then I have it dire systems. <laughs> I have it diarized to, to follow up a few weeks later. I can now go into my system and see whether they've been involved and, 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 and logged in. And, and then I can follow up and say, Hey, how's it going? And, more often than not, still get the same. Um, it's uh, I, I'm struggling to find the time. So now with all my courses, I when I say all my courses, I've just got the two courses <laughs> really, uh, and one that's a, that's already starting to look a bit dated. But I I put a page in there where it's a quick win. So I show people that hey, you can get 80% of this value in 20% of the time in one hour. You can learn most of this, and so it's kind of a fast track because trying to appeal to different personality types, different uh, pressures that we all have with time. And some people like to just watch videos and, uh, and uh, if they're not annoyed by my accent, then that's great. And I can do that. Uh, others like to scroll and, and just look through text. So I try and have a, a PDF in there and um, yeah, others like to be hands-on. So it's always important with training to throw some sort of, project work in there so that people can then go away and practice and and uh and and discover them for themselves that yes i can do this implement it get that confidence empower them and uh and do it that way and then i have the wider forum and community where where everyone gets together and, and supports each other yeah it's good yeah. fun so you know talking about that you have you have the forum on your website that's for anybody who wants to join in and um you know there's there's monthly challenges on there um uh, you know, that, that's kind of stuff that I tried to do with the um, Artful IPC community on MeWe, but I'm just so not good at keeping it up. But, uh, um, you know, there's there's a, a lot of good dialogue there uh, back and forth with other members. And, and you know, it's like like you and, and Shane Mostyn on your podcast uh, just recently talked about, you know, community and, and things like that in the mobile photography space. And you know, again, just like anywhere else, there's, there's, you know, all that camaraderie and friendship and, and um, no, no elitism. There's no, no, nobody, everybody gets along. And that's what I love about it. And uh, uh, so, uh, so I also wanted to ask you, how did you get started in mobile photography, right from the beginning? Like, uh, you've been into photography for 25 years, you said, but obviously, that's, not been mobile all that time yeah yeah so um six years ago uh i kind of had a a, a moment where i realized that uh well go back a step I, I i i yeah i worked in photography very technical and uh and i hated photography <laughs> to be completely <laughs> honest i really i really disliked it because for me it felt like every time i pull out a camera and i had the best camera stuff you could buy Every time I pulled it out, I felt like I was at work. So I had that, that, that connection every time and, and you'd be at family events and everyone would say, oh, you're the photographer. And, and oh, I'd, yeah, so I'd bring yeah. out my big gear <laughs> and, and I'd be one of those annoying perfectionist people who would say, okay, just turn your shoulders this way, do this. Do, not, not that I knew what I was doing, but, but then I would 
you know, the settings, I'd be there trying to get it all perfect. And, uh, and it just felt like I was at work. So I just didn't take photos. And, and I've got three, three young kids. And uh, six years ago, I kind of realized that I don't take any photos. And that, that happened when my mum passed away. And, um, and if you've been, un- been through that unfortunate experience where, where you lose a parent or, or a loved one, you, in preparation for the funeral and that sort of thing, you, you go looking for photos. And my mum was quite ill for a long time. And most of her adult life, she was quite ill. And she hated having her photo taken. So she never took photos of herself and going through her photos. The only photos they, that mum and dad had were just these scenic locations where they were. And, and it's like, well, yeah, Warnable, the whales at Warnable are fantastic, but that's, that's not what we, what we want. We're desperate to find photos of, of mum. And then the real um, shock for me was then going through our photos. And at the time, my oldest was nine, Ella was nine years old, and, uh, and we had six photos of my mum. And over nine years, I had six photos. And that was just a real wake up call. It's like, what? Wow. How? I've got the most expensive gear. Like, I have no excuse. I've, I've got, I've, you know, um, I mean, nowadays we've got the phones, which is, which is brilliant. But then I can't say I didn't have the convenience of a phone because I had all this stuff. So after that point, I decided that well, I realized, well, yeah, there's no photos of me either because we're, us photographers are much more comfortable behind the camera, not in front of it. And so I kind of thought, okay, well, I, I need to get into photography and take more photos. And and it became, as we've all experienced, and <laughs> your litness, listeners are here because they've experienced it themselves, that lugging around that big gear can be quite uh, difficult. And you miss photo opportunities because you don't have your camera with you. And so I... I I suspended my extreme prejudice towards the smartphone <laughs> because it's like, why would I ever take a photo with a phone? I've got all this gear. And, and then after that point, I, I, I uh, yeah, just, just discovered that, Hey, I, I don't have to worry about the technical side of it and started to enjoy taking photos. And then I then wanted to, and I became a photo enthusiast. And even though I've been working in photography for a long time, taking photos, I wanted to, to take photos that, were aesthetically pleasing and looked nice and were balanced and powerful and all this sort of thing. But I had no idea. I was learning photography all over again. And, and the smartphone allowed me to just focus on that and concentrate on that instead of, you know, what F-stop am I using and all that sort of yeah. thing. And, and so then I kind of went on this kind of journey through, um, through that because I didn't know about composition as long as I had what I needed in the frame, I was happy. And so I had to learn about composition and it was actually going out with a, um, a professional photographer and spending one-on-one time and with him, and I said, well, mate, I, I just don't get it. I, your photos look amazing. And mine just look like snapshots and over a coffee, we talked about it and he, he opened my eyes to all these different, uh, guidelines and and the way he explained it to me was that you're not taking the photo for you you're taking the photo for the viewer and what you're trying to do is you're trying to set this scene up in this photo that they have a visual anchor something to go to that has space around it so then you can as landscape photographer so it might make more sense what I'm talking about and then have space around that to then go and look at other focal points and, and elements in the photo that then you create this visual journey and create narrative and because i'd heard this idea of storytelling and all that it's like storytelling we're we're at, we're down at the ocean but there's no story here there's no hero villains <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. but, but when he explained to me that the way you place these elements in the in the frame and and, and how they all relate to each other you know size um, positioning um, differential focus all this sort of thing that um when he explained that to me, it's like, ah, oh, now, now I get it. Like now I understand how to create an engaging photo. And for me, that was kind of the, uh, the moment where I realized that this technical side of my brain that I've always connected with, I can have a bit of a systematic approach to photography. And then that will kind of unlock and unleash the creative side of it, where I just have fun with different perspectives and, uh, and that type of thing. So, uh, and then, 
being having the obsessive personality that I thought I'd I then I went, I thought, okay, composition is the key. So then I went out and studied composition and then became very quickly overwhelmed by how many things there are out there. And uh, so then I developed a bit of a system for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just let everybody know, because I, I know this, because we've talked about this before, but let everybody know the importance of getting a photo of a family member, because that there's a photo you have of your mother that is just absolutely priceless for you and your family. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it, it's hard because people our age, we, we kind of, we don't like selfies. <laughs> yeah. my, my kids take selfies multiple times every day. <laughs> but <for laughs> That's us, the generation. Us, yeah. yeah, I know. It's, I, I wish I could get over it, but it's just so hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and and it is because the photos are they're they're a gift for others. They're you know, we enjoy taking them, but a, a lot of my students say that one of the reasons they want to improve their photography is to be able to give them to you know literally give them to people as gifts for for Christmas and that sort of thing. And and I know myself, we 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 put together a bit of a family album for for all of us, and we give that to um, my my dad and and my wife's parents as as their Christmas gift. And at first it was a bit weird, you know, hey, here's some photos of us. <laughs> it's all about us and giving yeah. that to them. But but they they love it. And when we were uh, overseas, living overseas prior to prior to COVID and had to kind of rush back <laughs> to Australia to lockdown. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, that year we missed. We missed the album because we we're just so busy and uh, and they were both they were, they were just devastated. It's like, oh come on, we where's our calendar? So it's, it's, it's a gift for other people. And, and, um, and that's it. And one of the things I forgot to mention there is um, when I first got into it, I, I um, the live photos on the iPhone, I thought it was a bit gimmicky and thought, you know, it's just annoying this scrolling through the, through the photos app and you've got all these wiggling photos and, and, uh, and prior to iOS 13, it kind of felt like a bit of a gimmick. Now you've got the long exposure and all that sort of cool stuff in there as well. But um but there's one photo, one of those photos that I have of my mom, one of them was actually a live photo. So we could actually hold our finger on there and we've got a couple of seconds of my mum's voice. And as you say, that's just, that's just priceless because memories fade. And, uh, and my youngest now, he's now nine. And uh, so he was, he was three. And so he doesn't really remember grandma, but every now and again, he grabs that photo and he, and he plays it. And it just, it's just priceless. Yep. yep. Yeah. Photography is amazing. I don't, I don't use live photos enough. Um, I honestly don't uh, probably because I use Halide more than I use the, uh, the native camera, but Dave, you use live photos all the time and yeah. you know, you're able to capture uh, a lot of moments with your dogs and, and cats mm -hmm. and things like that. And uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you find a lot of value in it too. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that, that's honestly the main reason I use it because it's so hard to, you know, especially the cats. It's like, well, the, the dogs get a little crazy. It's like, okay, stay. That's a perfect position. And they move. <laughs> or let me, and, and they know, like I put up the, I put up my, my phone to get a picture. And they start to move. So having that live photo is in like our one cat who um, we had to put to sleep just a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago one of those things where time kind of you lose track of how long time is but um there were a couple of live photos of her where you can see like the movement she did or her meow or something like that and mm. um you know for us the, our, our animals are our kids mm. and um i was able now i saw someone else put a photo out of their cat in a box so, and this is one advantage of Google Photos. I was able to go into Google Photos, hit search, hit type in cat box, and it came up with all the photos with cats and boxes. And that's a little bit better than what the iPhone can do. So I was able to say, hey, that one I like, that one I like, that one I like, and they were all live photos and that one, that one, and then say, create a collage or create a, a slideshow or create a video and be able to get a little video together of, you know, over the last how many, I think it's over the last four or five years of photos of 
you know, cats in different boxes where I could throw it together. And having that live photo where you had that little bit of movement. And like I said, it's only just a second or two before and after the, the photo, but it's just enough to hit that movement where it's real nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is pretty cool. And I have a, a you know, I've, I've talked about it on the show before. We, uh, we had to put our, our Yorkie to sleep back in the spring because she was so ill so fast, like it happened in a week. And, um, but there's a live photo that we have that I use of my, my iPhone as a, a, my lock screen. And it's just her, you know, with, with her feet up on my knee or whatever. And she, she just kind of sneezed a little bit. And just to see that all the time is, it's so cool. Um, so, uh, yeah. what was I going to say now? <clears throat> I'll, I'll um, just add something there, Greg, if I can. Yeah. I had, um, I had somebody in my, um, in my community share a photo of them at the moment when they were at the vet and um, when the, when their uh, dog passed away and it's such a, an emotional time that I thought, how, how did you think to take that photo? And because that that's really valuable and then as it happened two weeks later my dog passed away mm. and uh and i was at the vet this is this is going back a few years ago now and uh and and because and this is one of the things i like about the community and how we kind of learn from each other and, and motivated blah 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 is that if i hadn't have seen that photo i wouldn't have thought to ask the vet to take a photo of me saying goodbye to my dog and and it's such a I mean, it's pretty raw. <laughs> I mean, it's, mm. I mean I, I, I'm pretty upset. But when I see that photo, it is a moment in time that is really, you, you don't want to forget that pain. You don't want to forget that. So, um, yeah, those photos are, are really powerful. Even if it is just for yourself, you know, I'm not, I would never share that online or share that with anyone. But for me, that's a really important photo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, so, well, moving on to a little, uh, a little more lighthearted topic. <laughs> um, uh, so you are also uh, an ambassador for a wonderful company called Struman Optics. Um, as you know, I've got this on my, my case again, and I got my cinematic <laughs> macro lens, which is, I mean, I got to tell you, it's just the best macro lens I've ever seen any images from. And I'm not just trying to talk myself up here. The thing is, it's so good. It's so clear. Um, I mean, it's just a, just an amazing piece of art. I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And so, but the, and they're located not too far from you. Is that correct? Yeah, they're only an hour away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, how did so you become they... a, a, an ambassador for them? I asked. Oh, nice. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> That's right. If you don't ask, you don't receive. That's right. <laughs> no, actually, uh, uh, so they reached out and, and said to me, hey, look, we, um, we want to provide a, a course to all our customers who buy our lenses. We want to kind of help them along and uh, get the most out of the lenses, but also just take that first step in their photography. So I put together a free course for them. And, uh, and that was brilliant. Every time you buy a, um, a lens and the little get started uh, package, the little card there would have all the details there. And, and that, was, that was great for, for lead generation for me. And it was great for their, their customers because then they could get more out of their, their, um, their lenses as well because understanding how to clean it, like <laughs> that's the number one thing. You know, when you're cleaning your lens, I, uh, you, you don't see this on, on YouTube, but I, but I have a, I just, I just use a little cotton bud, you know, that the, you clean out your ears with. You use one of those instead of using your T-shirt because that just spreads your, your finger um, oils. <laughs> so using one of those. So I, I put little tips in there like that, but then I also talked about the photo intention, storytelling, composition, and, uh, and a six-step editing process on Snapseed that you can apply to all, all the courses. So that was how it kind of started. And then I said to just said to them, hey, look, do you have an ambassador program? Because I love what you're doing. I love your product. And they said, no, we don't. But how about you be the first one? And so, so that's how that kind of came about. And, and, and yeah, I, their lenses, I, I've tried a few, quite a few different ones. And I found that a lot of them would just, depending which way you're, you're pointing the phone into light, you'd have a lot of that um, uh, just 
contrast issues, chromatic aberration issues. But the worst one I found with a lot of lenses was the focus, the, the soft focus and around the edges. I mean, 90% of the photos that I take when I'm editing them, I'll go and do that. <laughs> but that's intentional. I want that choice. <laughs> I don't want the lens manufacturer to, to make that choice for me. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> but, but that said, there are, there are limitations uh, with lenses. They have a 14 times and a 21 times, which is like a bazooka sitting on front of your phone. And because of pure physics and with a small uh, sensor on your phone, it, it doesn't work so well. You do have the, those issues that I talked about. One of the things that's fantastic about the built-in lenses with our smartphones is that if there's any sort of issues like that, the manufacturers are aware of it and then they use computational photography to go and correct it. Like I, I, I'm still blown away by panoramic mode on our phones. That you know, I've, got, I've got a $600 panoramic head sitting in my cupboard there that I'll never ever use again because it's just all computational. So the lenses, the lens attachments, uh, they're not as necessary as they once were. But that said, the main lens on your smartphone, on, on most, I know there's a couple, but on most smartphones, the main lens is the best lens. It has the biggest aperture, lets in the most amount of light. Uh, so uh, there's always going to be a place for lens attachments to offer you that versatility that the multiple lenses on your phone provide you, but be able to take in the, the most amount of uh, light and, and detail. And the coating on the lenses adds that extra vibrancy and, and, and a bit of sharpness and all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah. Just flashed. I <laughs> just saw the screen flash. You're showing yeah, it there. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just showing the uh, the lenses on the uh, on your website yeah. here. Yep, fantastic. So um, yeah, but as, as you said, the the macro lens that that one is that one is brilliant. They they have a couple of macros. They have a small macro which is which gives you the two point eight that you got to hold right on top of the 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 subject like a lot of macro lenses out there. <laughs> to be yeah. honest, the first time they sent me that. I actually contacted them and said, I'm going to, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to send you this one back. It, it's broken. And because <laughs> I, I was used to a macro lens on a, on a DSLR and how that works. And they said, Oh, no, no, you've actually got to hold it right on top of it. It's like, Oh, okay. So how do I let light in then if I'm right on top of it? And so, I mean, it's, it's fantastic for magnification. And, and I was blown away by it. again, that edge to edge sharpness, no distortion, but it's, uh, but then they said they reached out again and said have you got any ideas for other type of lenses so um, talking to the community and knowing what they wanted and is because uh, I used to have a really good vibrant Facebook group then and reached out to them and uh, and we kind of all put together some ideas and the, and the manual focus macro was kind of the one thing that was missing out there that we would all love uh, I know we can use apps like Halide for manual focus which is fantastic especially their, their macro mode that they've just released a couple of days ago mm -hmm. but uh to be able to uh reposition the lens so that you can be within millimeters and and focus it so you can be within millimeters and then bring it back and be able to focus again from about you know two three inches away seven centimeters away and still get that that whole b in focus instead of just the slither of the b's eyebrow as, as ben at halo used that example the eyebrow of the bee in focus yeah. <laughs> then um that, then that was just for me it was just a, a game changer with macro photography on the smartphone because the blur is not computational as amazing as it is natural blur from glass is is unbeatable and uh and that was the thing that when they sent me the prototype uh, there's a couple of issues with how stiff the ring was and the, the lens cap, but, but the one they've got now is, is just, uh, it's just brilliant. And uh, I haven't tried it on the iPhone 13 pro max, Dave, I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you said, just a game changer, that lens in particular, they've got lots of lenses uh, wide and, and, uh, and uh, telephoto, which is great for zoom meetings to throw, you can clip it in front of your, your, your laptop as well. So there's a lot of versatility there, but the, the cinematic macro, the manual macro, that's the one that I love. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was, um, <clears throat> there was a discussion 
on, um, I think it was on Shane Mostyn's Facebook group. Uh, of course, I put macro pictures on there and people were asking, you know, how close were you to the, it was a bee and how close were, close were you to the bee and all this stuff. And um, of course, I tried to remember as best I could, but I think that particular shot, I was about three to four centimeters away um, because I took your advice and put the lens, you know, at about the midpoint of the focus range. And then I just let, uh, cause I use halide. So I let put halide on autofocus and uh, you know, I, I was able to get sharp focus on it and it was moving around or whatever, but um, you know, so, and I explained that the nice thing about that lens is you can, you can be, uh, you know, up to, well, I don't know, 10 centimeters or so away from the subject, or you can be as close as a, as a few millimeters. And um, so this, this person was, uh, uh, I believe she got a hold of you anyway. Uh, I think, cause I think she's not far from Struman's location as well. And so she was going to um, get either the HD macro or the cinematic uh, macro. And I, I told her, I said, you'll get a lot better results with the cinematic because it's a, such mm -hmm. it's so versatile. And um, so I imagine that's the one she's going to get. And, uh, yep. um, you know, it, it's, 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 it, this thing is a bloody legend, legend in its own mind <laughs> or in its own right. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just fantastic. And, and I'm so grateful that I have it and I have you to thank for that. And, um, uh, and, and you know what, the case isn't too bad either. Like it's a, it's a nice sharp case and it's still not a scratch on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you look after it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I try to look after them the best I can. Uh, just, I, I, I just, it just drives me crazy when I see somebody just with a, a with a new phone and it's all scratched and beat up and, but, um, but anyway, uh, Dave, you have any questions for Mike at all or? Not, not right. No, no. I mean, we handled a lot of stuff that I would have asked. Um, but I also want to say kind of springboard off in terms of a positive way about the storytelling where there's so many times that I'm out somewhere and I see something or something really catches my eye. And I'm like, oh, I, in terms of, let's say my wife, Ruth is like, I wish Ruth was here to see this. This is nice. Or, yeah. you know, it's some or, or uh, somewhere that um, recently before I've had my string of bad luck over the last two months, um, I was in a trail race and you're literally it's in a it's in a county park. So you're not really in the middle of nowhere, per se, but it's not that accessible where you have to get. And where I and was just for just for yeah. to, to let Mike know, Dave is a runner, Mike, he, he does a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ah. you know mostly, mostly know. road races, mostly road yeah. races, but there's one trail race I do every year. And you're getting a good amount of elevation climb and to get where I was, you know, you, you it's you're away from the roads. And if you're not in decent shape, it's hard to get up there. So where I was, there was just, I just really liked the way it looked with the kind of slant of the, the hill I was on and the path going across. And it was in early August, so everything was green and lush and, you know, really vibrant. And I was like, this is just a great shot. So, you know, obviously if you're going on a trail run that's seven miles, you're not going to pack <laughs> a, a nice camera. So I was able to pull out my phone and go, you know what, this is going to be this is going to be a nice shot. I'm just going to stop for a second, just pull it out, get a couple of shots. And then afterwards, it, look at, you know, just this is just something caught my eye and I was able to share it with people. Mm. You know, not necessarily yeah. do the if, if you're old enough to remember the old slideshow, you never you don't necessarily oh, yeah. want to do that. It's like, <laughs> and here's the fourth shot I took of that rock. Cha-ching. And here's the yeah. next one, cha-ching. But <laughs> to actually, you know, being able to say, oh, and in the middle of the race, I saw this photo or I was here. And, you know, there, especially if you go to a lot of places where, for me, a lot of times in the middle of some of these races, it's like, you're places where you normally can't walk. Like a road race where, you know, 
I, if you're in the middle of a city, you're going over a bridge and, you know, some of these places, they're not sidewalks where someone could walk there or there's no convenient place for them to walk to. So to say, I just saw this and I wanted to show you this view I had here or the sun hits something the right way or the fog hits it. You're like, I want to share this with people. Not, not, not yeah. necessarily because, hey, let me show you off how I'm running, but just this image is when it's coming up, just kind of hits you when you see it. Yeah. And Beautiful. just a positive way to sh just share an experience without making, dragging someone say, hey, come with me on this 10 come mile back. run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get me there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, no, I I'm all for you doing it, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I just share uh, my, my system? So one of the things we struggle with is that we see a scene like that. And how often have we all said the photo doesn't do it justice? <laughs> yeah, oh, so yeah. I could imagine that scene, Dave, where, where you've got that. You said how the fog's falling and all that sort of thing. It can actually be really hard, especially with that, the wide angle lens and that, that subject to lens distortion, that sort of thing. Things that are further away can look really small. And it's actually really hard to capture your emotion that you've felt and with storytelling with photos it, storytelling because that's one of the things i struggle with people would say that to me all the time and i didn't really get it and i, and I kind of touched on it before but but with my system that i use it's uh storytelling it, it's about the intention is first of all before you get into a composition system is the intention and the intention in that scenario dave is that i want to capture what i'm feeling what i what this scene like it's, it's impacted on me that's the stimulus that's the intention is i want to capture this scene so then after that it's like okay drawing on my visual literacy and understanding how the eye moves around scenes how am i going to capture this in a way how am i going to position everything so that i can communicate this story and that's what the story is that story is this scene and the the components of that scene that work for it so my system is basically the first step is where do I, where do i position myself and where do I position my camera, distance, height, tilt? You mentioned the tilt of the, of the, of the uh, road or the mountain there. Like, do I need to tilt it just a little bit to further emphasize it? Uh, that sort of thing. So that's the first step is where do I position and pre or prepare and position the camera? The second step of the system is where do I position the main hero of the photo, the, the main visual anchor, the, the emphasis point, the, the, the point of fixation in the photo where somebody is attracted to my photo, where do I want them to look first? So when you're taking the photo, you, you just kind of, you can even just squint and look at it, try and reduce the, the details then squint and go, okay, what am I seeing first? Is it the big boulder? Is it the size of the boulder? Is it, is it that, or is there something in this scene that is grabbing my eye first? The second step, sorry, the third step then is how do I position the other parts of the scene, the contextual elements of the scene? So whether it's the windy path, is there something at the end of that windy path to kind of reward a viewer following that path? So that sort of thing. And then the fourth step of, of my composition system is then it's not really composition. It's the editing side of it. But I would suggest that adding a vignette to your photo does add composition to your photo because you're darkening the edges and you're bringing that, the viewer's attention back into the middle of the middle of the scene whether you've positioned that vignette right on the edges or you've moved that central point a bit off center editing kind of because we all we're all attracted to high contrast color faces movement or, or implied movement these are the things that attract our attention when we look at a scene look at a photo so if we can edit it and do localized editing with some amazing apps that are out there then you can manipulate the viewer's attention to follow that path and take in the scene exactly the way you took it in and highlight the bits that kind of grab your attention, whether it's the texture of the gravel on the ground or whether it's the beautiful lighting or if the light, or sorry, the sky, if the sky is kind of blur and it wasn't so much about that, well, you can blur that out and you can uh, desaturate and mute some colors and that sort of thing. So the, I, I believe that the, the editing side of it is kind of, it's integral to the composition to kind of enhance that viewer experience. So, yeah, so that's, that's how I break it down is you have the intention and, and this is what I'm photographing. And then the composition is, is how am I going to tell this, how, how am I going to tell this story? Yeah. 
Yeah. So if, if that's just a fraction of what's in your, your new course on composition, it's going to be really something else. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, composition is, <clears throat> it, it's not everything about photography, but it sure is a big part of it. Uh, I mean, if you don't have a, a good composition that's, you know, aesthetically pleasing to the viewer, um, then you've just got either a snapshot or, or you know, just a, a photo that's not that good. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what all is in that course. Uh, so we'll, we'll cap it off here real quick with, um, I, I, I got a question for both of you guys, because both of you guys are going to get the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And knowing now what we do about it, I mean, I'm not getting one, so I, I won't be able to answer this question myself, but what is it that you're looking forward to the most? And Dave, we'll start with you and then we'll, we'll finish with Mike. There we go. Um, honestly, the one thing I'm kind of looking forward to is the combination of more Zoom, uh, because there are times that I want to take pictures of something happening that I can't physically get closer. Um, and the better night mode and mm -hmm. not necessarily just for outdoor shots, night mode, but indoor shots where you don't have to do the whole 10 second, 30 second exposure for night mode. Um, but even doing it one second exposure can make a room that's not very well, just playing around with Bruce phone, um, you know, just make a room that's not necessarily the most lit, beautiful in the world at night, but that just brings enough where you can actually see what's going on without it being grainy and, you know, where I take it with my phone and I can, you can see the shot, but for me to boost it in order to get a good crispness to see exactly what you're seeing, it gets grainy and there's a lot of artifacts involved where taking it with hers is like, oh, you can actually see the cat on the chair that I'm trying to take a picture of. And it's not horrible graininess. And those are the two things I'm kind of photography wise, most looking for. Okay, cool. Uh, how about you, Mike, um, with all the features and, and capabilities that you've seen with, with the 13 pro max, what do you, what do you look forward to most? Uh, for me, I, I totally agree with Dave. Those, those two points, the zoom, not so much. I, I think the two times zoom for me works enough. i I don't think I've found myself thinking, oh, I wish I had an extra, extra zoom, uh, but just with the type of subjects and photography that I take, I don't really take too many long distance stuff. Uh, the, yeah, uh, night mode doesn't really like for night mode to enable, it needs to be really dark, but like Dave said, just the, the computational side of photography that, that they, that they do to be able to just take those indoor shots where previously it would just have, you know, it would just get grainy and low resolution, that sort of thing. So just to be able to have that convenience of not think about, oh, I need to turn the lights on and make this area brighter. And hey, hey kids, can you open up your presence over in this room because it's a bit brighter? <laughs> you know, uh, so that is going to be amazing. And I'm really looking forward to uh, having a play around with the the macro mode as well and uh, being able to get in super close because we don't always carry our lens attachments with us. Although I, although I have one in the glove box so that it's always with me, <laughs> but I'm weird. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but to be able to have that opportunity to just explore and have fun with, with macro, because for me, that's, and I, and I can't wait to, when your book comes out, Greg, to uh, just pick up some more tips here and there. And because macro is kind of exploring the unseen world. And, and it, it's one of the things I love about photography is that macro kind of forces you to slow down, take in the details and, uh, and so that's one of the things I'm looking forward to with the new phone is being able to get into that world and explore that world a bit more at any time that I want. Yeah, well, that's cool. Um, one thing that, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that um, that neither of you actually mentioned was the cinematic video. Uh, I know, Dave, you've played with it a little bit with Ruth's phone, but um, uh, I mean, I think that just goes to show you that it's not going to be for just everyone uh um i know that there's a fellow i know that um that has the 13 pro and he's tried the the cinematic video with his kids and stuff and i mean it was it, it was nice it was okay but um it's just one of those features and i think we mentioned this before dave 
it's bound to improve over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, because as it is right now, I mean, eh, it could be a little janky at times. So I just thought that was interesting that neither of you, you know, mentioned that, but that's fine because it's just not something that, you know, probably either one of you guys do a lot. I mean, I'd be the, I'd be the same way. I, if it was me answering that question, if I was getting one, I would probably be looking forward to probably the zoom, the, the three times telephoto, because the, the, the 2.5 times on my uh, 12 pro max is the lens I use the most. It, it's, it's um, you know, it doesn't have the best aperture out of all the cameras on there, but it is the one I use the most because I just like the, um, the view I get from it. And uh, I wish it had a better aperture, but um, so uh, would I, would I be looking forward to the macro on it? Uh, I don't know. The jury's out on that one for me too, because um, I mean, I've seen some pretty impressive stuff, but I'll tell you, you're not going to beat the glass when it comes to macro. You just can't do it. Uh, So uh, I probably wouldn't even use the macro on it that much if I had it because um I don't know. You just can't beat this. So, so well, uh, that was, you know, a great conversation with you, Mike. Um, I'm so glad we were able to line this up and have you on. Uh, why don't you uh, tell people where they could find you online? Uh, yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so the best way is through the, the website. And uh, so if you join the website, it's smartphonephotographytraining.com and uh and join the the forum join the free membership for now it is free and in there when in my tutorials and articles and all this sort of thing i always have links in there to uh pdfs ebooks all that sort of thing and they all live in a central repository inside this membership area so as soon as you sign up for one of those things with your email your name a membership is set up automatically for you and that's where you access it and it's a way that when you access it you get access to everything you get access to a ton of free stuff all my all my giveaways all my free course it's all in there with the forum and that's what i try and it's where i try and capture everybody and 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 look after everyone in there i spend a bit of quite a bit of time in there because that's the kind of that's the side of it that i really enjoy so um yeah just jump over the website and uh yeah, sign up for any of the free stuff and, and then you'll get all, all the free stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll have links to that in the uh, show notes and everything else so people, people can uh, uh, go ahead and follow that. And, and it, the, the, the forum, it, you know, it, it's, it's growing and it, it, it's a fun place to be. So definitely check that out. Uh, how about you, Dave? I think we all know where they can find you, but tell everybody anyway. (laughs) Yep. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter as ProfPod, um, on Facebook as Dave Podner Jr. All righty. And you can find me on Instagram at McMillan Photo and Twitter, McMillan underscore photo. And I'm also in the the forums on Mike's website. And, um, oh, let's see where else. Uh, I'm in a few different groups on Facebook, the, the Bloody Legends group with Shane Mawson Photography and, uh, or Molo Photography, and um, the, the Tiny Shutter group on Facebook, and the uh, Artful Eye Phonography community, artfulipc.club, that's what it is, right, and uh, now Mike, you also have a link that specifically leads to the uh, forum, is that right? Oh, there we go, I dropped out, come back, uh, a link to, what, sorry, Greg? to the forums you have a, d- a direct link to go to the forums uh yeah so basically it's uh so smartphone photography training.com forward slash get started and that's probably and that's the best way to get jump straight in yep get started you, don't you have one though with that ends with dot club oh yeah, yes i do thank you yeah <laughs> I, I forgot that i made it so simple <laughs> yeah, of course i do it's smartphone photography dot club yes it is smartphone photography dot club i tried to keep it really simple and i forgot <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> That's thank all right. you so yeah we'll definitely have that link in there too and uh um uh well uh you know thanks again guys uh thanks dave for coming on right after work i mean you probably haven't even had supper yet and um, Mike, thanks for jumping on on uh, early morning, early Saturday morning for you. It's Friday afternoon for us. And um, uh, I guess that's it for today. We will see everybody on the next one. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone.